Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the privilege to have this time. Lord, we ask tonight in the name of Jesus that you grant us access into truth that liberates and that helps in the name of Jesus. Anoint me to teach truth in simple and clear language like Jesus would have done were he physically present here. Anoint my listeners to understand better than I teach and to appreciate deeper than my explanations tonight in Jesus' name. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. Tips for handling long-distance relationships. Let me quickly say that the first thing I'll say here is that long-distance relationships uh, should not be the norm. All right, it's not God's intention to put people in a relationship. That's why it's a relationship. They are relating. All right, it's a sheep of relators. <laughs> it's a sheep of relators. That means, all right, they are vitally connected. You know, so it becomes important to appreciate that God's original intention for relationship is to have a close-knit bond. Now, when you read through scripture, you would easily agree with what I just said. To have a close-knit bond. All right, so in the beginning, God made Adam and Eve, male and female, created he them. And his intention was to have them together. So you had Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, as it were. All right, God placed them in a certain place together. God did not transfer any of them. All right, but the realities of the world in which we live brings us to the point where uh, it's obvious that we have to deal with more scenarios than what God originally intended. All right, so we are having to deal with more scenarios than God originally intended. Now, what God expects of us is to maximize where he places us. Now, that's what you must note. What God expects of us is to maximize where he places, where we find ourselves, rather. All right? So, sometimes we don't find ourselves exactly in how God patterned it. But what does he expect of us? He expects us to maximize the place. So, what happens when there's long distance relationship? I'm going to make a few points from a note I have. All right, I'm going to make a few points from the notes I have, and it's important to get it from that perspective. All right, the first thing I'm going to say is that long distance relationships is a relationship with special needs. All right, the way a relationship is structured determines its kind of needs. Long distance relationship is a relationship with special needs. In essence, there are needs that if you do not meet, the relationship is going to crumble. So it's a relationship with special needs. So part of what we're going to do tonight is to identify those special needs and do our best to address them. All right, so the first thing you are noting tonight is that long-distance relationships is a relationship with special needs. All right, the other thing I'll quickly say before I continue in the line of special needs is uh, long-distance relationships should not be maintained in perpetuity. Long-distance relationships should not be maintained in perpetuity. Even Jesus, who left us here, his bride, he didn't leave aimlessly and endlessly. He promises a return. In fact, when you read through scripture, the greatest hope we have is that he is returning. So when you read through Philippians, for example, it tells us to console one another. Thessalonians, console one another. Console one another with what? The day of the Lord. Because, you know, that's where Paul comes to and he begins to say, I believe Paul, yeah? Now, if only in this world we have hope, we have all men most miserable. If only in this world we have hope. Now, our hope transcends this place. That's why it's an active hope. So when long-distance relationship, whether it's marriage or courtship, comes into the place of perpetuity, all right, you have a problem. You have a big problem. All right, so it should never be, uh, you know, permanent in nature. All right, long distance relationships should be, as it were, a temporary situation or a situation that has a terminal date. Whether it has a terminal date naturally or not, you walk a terminal date into it and ensure that you make effort to make it uh, something that has an end date or an end in view. So it becomes important to appreciate that. So I said it's a relationship with special needs. All right, let's look at the few things that you, you need. Um, in a long distance relationship every relationship requires assurance long distance relationships require special assurance i'm going to prove some of these things i'm, I'm saying here tonight 
Long distance relationship requires more assurance. It requires more effort put into assuring. Alright, because these people are basically dealing with your voice. They are basically dealing with your text. They are basically dealing with things that are in the real sense not real. Alright, so it becomes important to appreciate, alright, it becomes important to appreciate that this relationship requires. Now I'm going to read this from my notes, alright, the need to be assured is consistent, persistent and pertinent. The need to be assured is consistent, it's never ending. Because this person doesn't have the privilege of seeing you later in church. This person doesn't have the privilege of seeing you later at work. This person doesn't have the privilege of saying I am coming and they are next door to you. Alright, this person is thrown away from you in a distance that is not easily solvable. Now, one of the things you must understand about relationship is that your mind is active. Alright, and one of the things the mind activates is the mind begins to activate questions as to their commitment. Alright, so the relationship, first of all, needs to be what? Uh, what did I say in this note? Consistent. Alright, your assurance has to be consistent. You know, you don't even have the liberty to throw the tantrums that some people throw when they're in a relationship that is not all too distant. That's one of the liberties you don't have. Why? You don't want to get you don't, don't want to get them thinking. Now you are in a space that is not easy to breach. You are in a space that is not easy to close. You are in a space that is not easy to, you know, undo. All right. So you don't want to put them in a situation where they find it difficult, all right, to understand your commitment. And you deserve also a person through a long distance who does everything to assure your emotion, all right, of your place, notwithstanding that they cannot see you. So it becomes important. Now I said it needs to be what? Uh, consistent. It needs to be persistent, uh, is the word I said. And it's very pertinent that you do that. All right, it must be consistent. It must be persistent. All right, the assurance. Why? Relationship comes with a lot of doubt. Relationships come with a lot of doubt. Why does doubt creep in? People want to be assured. People want to feel loved. People want to feel like, you know, they still mean what they meant to you at the beginning. All right. So through the distance, you, you want to understand that it must be so. All right. So you don't uh, need to allow, create, or foster the growth of doubt. Now, this is the mistake a lot of people make. So things you could get away with, when you are not in a long distance relationship, you may not get away with it when you are in a distance relationship. Now, that's why Paul says all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. It may be, you know, you may feel like you are in the right, you know, to, for instance, not talk to them or to drop the call and not respond. But what are you going to do over a long distance? You are going to confuse them. The more you do things that you may do and get away with when the distance is not so large, the more likely you are to lose the relationship. Now, let me quickly explain this. Part of why I'm saying this is that long-distance relationship exists more in the realm of thought than in the realm of physical connection. Of course, you know how I teach. I'm a child of God. I don't teach for people to cohabit. But while I do not teach for people to cohabit, there's something that distance does. That's why I said from the beginning, is a relationship with special needs. It deals more with the realm of thought. So you are trying your best to, you know, address how they think. All right. You're trying your best because what you do is you close the gap by giving them the right thoughts. That's one of the things you must, you must get here. You close the gap by giving them the right thoughts. I'm going to give you an example, very simple example that played out today. All right. So our son, our first child turned, um, turned uh, 10 on Friday. On the same Friday, I was flying to Port Harcourt for the 7.30 a.m. flight. So we just woke him up, sang better songs to him, no cake, nothing, 10. All right, so um, I, was, I was going to fly at 7.30. He was going to go to school. Now, my wife and I had agreed that, uh, I mean, things overwhelmed us as it were in the circumstance and we weren't going to, going to be able to do anything. Now, that's the understanding we had. But I had a different, different plan because I had a different kind of assurance I wanted to give. Alright, this boy just turned 10. He's human. He thinks. Alright. My wife has, had excused me, but I know she thinks. Alright. So I was flying to Port Harcourt and making all manner of plans to surprise him and my wife. Now that's not even a distance in perpetuity. This is just a very short distance. I was going to back on Sunday. 
So I fixed the bedding for 4 o'clock. I just came out of that to be doing this teaching. I fixed the bedding for 4 o'clock because my flight out of Port Harcourt was supposed to be for 11.20, uh, which was moved to uh, 11.40, moved to 12.40, and we ended up leaving at 1.30. By the time I got to the house, the surprise was well right. So I got someone to do the cake, get small chops, uh, got somebody else to get decoration, give the person the key, so that once my wife leaves the house, you know, uh, they get into the house, decorate, so that once we come from the airport, what do we have? We have a surprise at the party. My son had excused me, but it was apt for me to take advantage. Now, that's one of the things you do in long-distance relationship. You don't even take the liberty of the excuse you are given. You do everything within your power to assure your partner of their place in your life. You do everything to assure them of where you place them. So what happened? We show up in the house and my wife just couldn't believe it. My son couldn't believe it. He was so excited, absolutely excited. What do you do, want to do with a long distance relationship? You want to make sure you throw in enough to make them think you love them. You want to throw in a lot to make them think you are committed to them. I'm not saying the word think so that you are pretentious. I'm using the word think because you need to attack their thinking when there's a long distance relationship. This is why people are unable to obligate the people they date when the distance sets in. And I'm going to explain a few practical things tonight about this. You need to obligate their emotion with your action. You need to obligate their emotion with your action. All right, and how do you do that? You engage their thinking to the point where they are convinced that you love them. You engage their emotion to the point where they are convinced that you are committed to them. You engage their emotion to the point where they are convinced that the relationship means more to you than anything else. All right, it doesn't matter the job you do. It doesn't matter what school you are. Now, here's the deal. This is why for people listening to me tonight, you found it difficult to keep up with people who could not keep up with the commitment because of the distance. Distance in itself should not damage a relationship because what we should do to the distance is to manage the distance in a way that takes the proximity away. That makes it look like you're together even when you're not. And one of the things it achieves for you is it brings your partner to the point where your partner genuinely misses you. See, I do not believe that distance has the capacity to destroy a courtship relationship, for instance. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. It's just because the world today is so morally low, morally bankrupt. Because, uh, uh, let's be frank about it. If we do relationship as believers, there's so many boundaries anyway. So what should long distance do for us? We should maximize the time in such a way that it heightens, you know, the feelings of I miss you. That it heightens the feeling of you are committed to me and I can see it. All right, that's so important to note. Let's just continue with the notes before I explain a few other things. All right, let me say a few things you must do. Don't forget I say long distance relationship is a relationship with special needs. So let's identify a few things you must do when there's a distance in your relationship, whether it's marriage or dating or culture. Number one, you must consciously create moral trust. You must consciously create moral trust. I'm going to read a few points and explain them. All right, now the feeling that your partner is cheating, all right, can kill. It kills relationships. The feeling that your partner is not faithful, it kills relationships. All right, it saps the energy. It saps the energy, all right, and it stuns the real growth of the relationship. Why? Because your partner cannot commit to a person that they feel is not committed to them. Your partner cannot stay committed to a person that they feel is not emotionally committed to them. It begins to, it begins to damage their emotion towards you. So on this very first point, I have a couple of points under the uh, you know, moral trust. So the first thing you want to do, like I said, is you want to create moral trust. And I give the first reason to be that the moment your partner does not see your emotional commitment, what they begin to do is they begin to lose interest themselves and they do not see why they should hold on to the relationship. All right, so you can both pretend about this. <laughs> but that's wrong, all right? So you can both pretend about this feeling, but your heart will be bitter and full of suspicion, all right, that the relationship is gradually going. Once there's no moral trust. I'm going to explain shortly how you create the moral trust, how you are practical about it. 
But moral trust is a big deal. All right. Very, very big deal. All right. So, number two thing I'll say on that moral trust is you must guard this matter. You must guard it. This is not an issue you leave to chance. This is not an issue you leave to they know me now. They don't know you anything. All right. Temptation will come to their heart. Their heart will tell them, is he doing anything? They have to tell them, are you sure she's okay? Are you sure she's not leaning on someone? All right, how do you do that? Number one, you live right. Strive to live right. That's the first way you guard it. See, strive to live right. Live in such a way that your conscience is also clear. Live in such a way that your conscience is also clear. All right, that's the first thing you must do. Number two, you must consistently assure them of your emotional commitment to them. You must consistently assure them of your emotional commitment to them. If you can't do that, you will lose them. All right. So like I said, you must consistently, all right, assure them of your emotional commitment to them. Very important point to note. All right. Why are you doing this? The other thing you must do, you must do this in your conduct. You must do this in your speech. And you must do this in your response. Your conduct is your general behavior. Your speech is words originating from you. Your response is what you answer them when they show that they have a concern. All right? You know what a lot of people do that, that's a mistake? They shut down their partner when their partner begins to talk, you know, about moral issues. Now, shutting down your partner when your partner has genuine questions about moral issues only creates more suspicion. Shutting down your partner when your partner has moral questions only creates suspicion. What should you do? Assure them. What should you do? Act right. What should you do? Live right. What should you do? Behave right. That's what you should be doing. All right. So it's important, number one, to live right. Number two, it's important to consistently assure them. Because the moment they begin to lose assurance, what happens is, you know, they begin to lose interest in the relationship. They begin to run into doubt. They become afraid because they can't trust that, you know, they can trust. All right. So it's so important. Another point to mention on that the moral trust issue is let your schedules be accessible. Some people are so funny. You are over a distance. When your phone is off, it's off. That's the problem. You are over a distance. You don't even care to call. You don't care to communicate. You don't care to explain a way why you could not take a call. You don't care, all right? You don't care, you know, to show them your shadow, to uh, show them your shadow. You know, you don't care. That's a problem. Your shadow must be so clear to them. Your shadow must be so clear. All right, let them have your timetable. If you walk, let them have your calendar. All right, let them have your rotor. You get what I'm saying? If you are schooling, let them know when you'll be in class. Be so open. Let them know I'm getting into the class. I won't be able to pick a call. I want to concentrate. I can't chat now. Be able to take video calls without announcement. You see some people in a relationship. I mean, just because your partner called a video call. Come on. Get on. Let's get honest about this. Without announcement, you can't take video calls. I mean, you get angry that they called. It's really for the marriage. There's nowhere you will be that you cannot take a call. Except the phone is not in your hand. And at the earliest opportunity, you get back to the call and you explain. So a lot of people are making this mistake. You are not explaining. You are expecting that they should understand now. Please, for God's sake, stop cutting the excuses. Don't forget where we started this conversation. We said this is an issue of the mind. Long distance relationship is a thinking relationship. They are going to think. They are going to imagine. They are going to assume. What do you want to do? You want to make sure that their thinking is funneled into what you want them to think. You are going to want to make sure that their thinking, all right, is directed in the direction of trust, is directed in the direction, all right, in the direction of confidence. All right, be accessible. That's what I'm saying. Be extremely accessible. All right. So do not be selective when you want to be public with your partner. <laughs> This one applies especially to people dating. Don't be selective. There are no friends you want to be with that you cannot call and say baby. That you cannot call and say sweetheart. That, see, that's a problem. So you see people creating trust issues by themselves. You see people creating trust issues by themselves. You shouldn't create trust issues for yourself. That's what I'm saying. 
You shouldn't create trust issues by yourself. What should you be doing? You should be enhancing trust by all means. So don't be selective about being public about them. In fact, for some people in relationship, I know you are not a very public person, but the day you got into a long distance relationship, you just signed up for posting about your partner lavishly. 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 That's part of how you create moral trust. You need to talk about them lavishly. You need to be clear about this. There's nothing hidden about them. Because the moment you begin to hide them, they begin to lose trust in you. The moment you are not lavish about them, they lose trust in you. What, what privacy are you talking about over the distance? Privacy so that I can keep another person where you are? Something's wrong with you. That's what all of us will think. I will not be wrong. That's what all of us will think and we will not be wrong. We will be right. Because if you have nothing to hide, you will not hide your partner. I want to repeat that. If you have nothing to hide, you will not hide your partner. Because you are hiding your partner because there is indeed something to hide. And just in case I am wrong, that is how you will think or your partner will think in a long distance relationship. They can't help thinking that you are hiding something to hide them. Alright, so it's so important under moral trust all right, to be accessible to not be selective about when you want to be public with your partner if you have nothing to hide. So if you have nothing to hide, they're public with them. Now, number five point, which is the last one I'll mention under moral trust, basically be so accessible that there's nothing your partner thinks you're hiding. That's the point you must take. Be so accessible that there's nothing your partner thinks you're hiding. If your partner continually thinks you're hiding something, and it's not their fault when it's as a result of your conduct, then don't blame them. Don't blame them. You need to create such moral trust, except they have a trust issue. Do your best so that um, as much as lie in your power, your partner does not have a doubt, all right, that you are keeping your morals as much as lie in your power. Let me say a few more things about this one. Let me say a few more things about this one. One of the ways you create moral trust is that everybody around you should know your partner. Everybody around you. Colleagues should know your partner. Friends should know your partner. Neighbors should know your partner. I do not even believe that when people are in a long distance relationship, they should not have friends of their partners that they can call in case they can't reach them. That's not issue of suspicion. If I can't reach you, who can I call? This has put a lot of partners in trouble where they can't reach the person they are dating and they can't talk to anybody else. That's a problem. Who can I talk to if I can't reach you? Who can I speak to if I can't reach you? So it becomes extremely important, all right, it becomes extremely important to be able to identify and to do that. If your friends where you are, all right, if your friends where you are are not the friends of your partner where they are, all right, across the distance where you are, there's a problem. You're not creating enough moral trust. All right, you can have friends in your location that your spouse in their location cannot assess as friends. That's a problem. So you must go all out to create moral trust. That's one of the things damaging long-distance relationships, whether it's marriage, whether it's dating or courtship. Moral trust. So you must go all out of your way to ensure that moral trust is deeply entrenched. Until you do that, you begin to lose the relationship. And I'm going to repeat one of the things I said under this moral trust before we move on to commitment trust, which is the next point I'll make. And I said, and I'm going to read this one directly, let your shadows be accessible, all right, and do not be selective about all right, when you want your, uh, to make your partner public, if you have nothing to hide, then don't hide them. If you have nothing to hide, then don't hide them. All right, so it's so important to understand these things in perspective. The other thing I said is you must have commitment trust. Now, when you're dealing with issues of trust, you are dealing with issues that, you know, relate to how they think. Do not forget where we started this conversation. We started this conversation on the point that says that we needed, all right, to, you know, deal with the thinking of our partner because uh, why did we say that? 
We said all we said at the beginning uh, before we got into the specific trust we are dealing with that long distance relationship is a thinking relationship. And if you don't deal with the thinking, the thinking will descend, all right, to suspicion, it will descend to uh, lack of trust, it will descend, all right, to doubt and all of that. So we are dealing with uh, the different kind of trust you must deal with to be able to identify, uh, you know, uh, how to address the fears that they may have. So don't forget, it's a thinking relationship when it's a distant relationship. We have just addressed moral trust. Let's go into commitment trust. All right. So the next kind of trust you want to entrench is the commitment trust. Do not forget the point we made. The point we made is that is what is a thinking relationship. And since it's a thinking relationship, you want to entrench trust. All right. As the next kind of thought you want them to have. Now, let's go on to show what this is. So now this is the impression your partner has about your commitment to them. Now, when you deal with a commitment trust, this is the impression your partner has about your commitment to them. Impression. You know, the problem a lot of people have is that they are acquainted with their rights. I'm going to repeat that. The problem a lot of people have is that they are so at home with their rights. Please, for God's sake, I'm trying my best. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. That's foolish talk. Once the relationship is distant, you owe them a duty, all right, to make them think you are committed. I'm not saying just make them think. Be committed and make them think it. Because the distance will always make them question your commitment until you show it. Alright. So it's so important to understand that I owe my partner a duty, alright, to show my commitment across the distance. I owe my partner a duty to show my commitment across the distance. All right, now let me quickly read from my notes. I said, this is the impression that your partner has about your commitment. All right, and this will make or mar the relationship because the moment commitment is off the table, your partner is off the relationship. All right, so let me mention a few points under the commitment trust. All right, so uh, uh, number one, you want to make sure your partner knows that you are not keeping any side attraction whether side chick side dude side cock side hen side chicken side goats side sheep no all right now the first thing you want to assure them now for some of these you need to tell them straight to the face i am not doing xyz and do not intend to do xyz so i'm going to focus on you my commitment is going to be to you so it becomes important number one to state it state your commitment restate your commitment all right state and restate your commitment it's important to state and restate your commitment you must do that you owe them a duty to state and restate your commitment all right number two thing you must uh, note is that you must plug all holes of doubt you must plug all holes of doubt one of the first things i'll say about plugging holes of doubt is that too many partners are reckless I won't be distant from my wife and be posting about ladies, whether it's their birthday, you know. Now, this way people are very stupid. I'm sorry I'm using that very strong word. This way a lot of people get extremely stupid. Let me repeat it in capital letters. This is where a lot of partners get extremely stupid. Why do I use such a harsh word in circumstances like this? People want to be so at home with their rights. They forget that their partner is entitled to be assured. Let me repeat that. People make the mistake of wanting to be at home with their rights, forgetting that their partners are entitled to be assured. I'm going to take that one more time. A lot of people are too at home with their rights that they forget that their partners are entitled to be assured. So you're in a long distance relationship. And your colleagues are always celebrating birthday beautiful girls you don't just stop at wishing them you post them on your status you post them on social media you don't just stop there you use endearing words you are a very stupid person you are so unmindful of your partner's mind you are so unmindful of your partner's capacity to be suspicious not because you are doing something and are hiding it but because all things are lawful but not all things are expedient 
the expediency of the peace of your relationship or marriage should trump the rights you want to exercise and express in how you relate with other people. So under commitment trust, one of the points you must note and notice very strongly is that your partner is entitled to your thoughtfulness. Your partner is entitled to your thoughtfulness. And until you are thoughtful, you are a fool. Ah, I know that that was hard on some people. Until you are thoughtful, you are what? A fool. You need to be thoughtful. All right, you need to be careful. You cannot maintain the commitment you need to maintain with them, all right, until you do this. So under commitment trust, that's another point you must note, all right? So leave no doubt. You plug all the holes of doubt. You plug all the holes of doubt, all right? Very important. Let me make some other point under that. So it is foolish to assume, all right, uh, this is the second point under that point. It is foolish to assume that punishing them will get the relationship anywhere. Because some people are so funny. They begin to punish their partner over the distance. You are just wrecking your relationship. Punish them with malice. Punish them, you know, with some doubt. Make, make, create uncertainty. That's a problem. All right, you're messing up the relationship. It's important not to do that. You are going to have to swallow your pride a lot of times. You are going to have to swallow your pride a lot of times. You are going to have to swallow your pride a lot of times. Not just a few times. Why? There are certain actions you can take as a right that will damage the marriage right after you do it or damage the relationship. All right, let me just read that particular point and move on. I'm aware my time is really running tonight. So leave no doubt that you are with your partner. Leave no doubt. You can address issues. You can get angry. But leave no doubt that you are with your partner. Leave no doubt that the relationship is still active. Leave no doubt that the relationship is still alive. All right? So leave no doubt that you are with your partner 100%. Leave no doubt whatsoever. All right? All right. So it is foolish to assume that punishing them with doubt, scarcity, and all such behavior will make them pursue you more. You may be damaging their capacity to even remain connected. You may be damaging their capacity to remain connected. So don't punish them. All right? So scarcity or creating doubt does not fix it. All right? So... Uh, there are always nicer people all around them tempting them give them commitment to stand on you need to note that point down there are always nice and tempting people around every partner tempting them with more than you are trying to give so how much more when you begin to pull out from giving it how much more when you begin to pull out from giving it so it becomes important to note the scarcity, creating doubt to be pursued is extremely, extremely uh, a bad way to go. All right. Let me mention two more points under commitment trust. Uh, number four point I'll mention under commitment trust. Let your words and conduct consistently reassure them uh, that you are still committed. That's one of the points I made earlier. That you need to say it. All right. Number five, adore them and make it plain that you have no plans outside them. Adore them and uh, assure them that you have no plans outside them. Number five. All right, let's continue. Number five. Under, number five, uh, under commitment trust is you adore them and make it plain that you have no plans outside them. See, relationship comes with a lot of pride, though. You need to be careful. See, a lot of pride comes in pride. You have a lot of pride coming through on relationship where people, you know, where people basically, you know, uh, uh, think that, you know, they can just walk away. They can just do what they want and just get away with it. No. If you value the relationship, you are going to put in more effort than that. All right. Now, it's a different ballgame and I'm going to address it in this series of teachings. All right. Uh, when your partner is undeserving. Let me quickly even make a statement about that. If your partner is undeserving, leave the relationship. Don't stay there and be keeping malice. Don't stay there and be refusing to be loving. Don't stay there and be refusing to give commitment. All right. So it's so important, absolutely important, very, very important to understand, all right, to understand that, you know, uh, reassuring them of your commitment and that you're still with them is the only thing you must do if you are still with them. 
So if they are not worth it, leave the relationship. So don't be with them and not be with them. All right, don't be with them and not be with them. If you are with them, you are with them. Very important to note that. If you are with them, you are with them. Don't be with them and not be with them. Very important. All right. So let's go on to uh, another point uh, and just continue to take this through. So uh, I think this is the last point I'll hammer on tonight. Uh, I think this is the last point I'll hammer on tonight and just close the teaching. So long distance relationship will require both of you channeling your focus on the relationship. Now, let me quickly say why I say this one. If both of you are not channeling the effort, please leave the relationship if you are not yet married. If both of you are not channeling the effort and you are married, begin to intercede for them. It takes two to make marriage work. One can only struggle for its restoration. Sadly, a lot of people have been put in this place. So when one is doing all of these things, that one is doing it as a restorative effort, not as the standard. It takes two. So if you are not yet married and the effort is not coming in, ah, ah, problem. If you are not yet married and one partner is not giving the effort, you are talking about problem. It takes two. So for the single, it is a standard to expect as a condition of going forward. For the married, it is a standard to fight for its restoration if it doesn't exist. What am I saying fight for his restoration? Don't just lift up your hands and say, ah, my husband won't do it, my wife won't do it, except you want a bad marriage. Somebody need to fight for the marriage. Somebody need to contribute, all right? Somebody need to contribute for the well-being of that marriage. All right? So, so you need to come good, all right, on your challenges. That means you need to address challenges and not create challenges for each other. All right? I'm going to pause this here. Uh, I know that um, I won't be able to teach next Sunday. I'll be teaching uh, two Sundays from now. 